everyone, Rachel Alford here, and I'm excited to bring this tutorial from Annie's today. We will be going over how to make the Mod Triangles Pillow designed by Tammy Hildebrand. This pillow has five different colors that you can use. So you can do like a dark moody vibe or you can do fun and vibrant. I'm excited to see what colors you choose. We will be going over how to do the single crochet join, the single crochet decrease, how to work in the row ends of the triangles, as well as the diagram and assembly of the pillow. You can find the pattern below. All right, let's grab our yarn and hook and let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need lightweight size three yarn and the pattern says five colors for the front and then one different color for the back. So six colors total. And for this tutorial, I will be using worsted weight yarn just so we can see it better. And then you'll also need a tapestry needle, an E 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, and then also a pillow form, an 18 inch pillow form. So one of these. And also again, I am going to be using an H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook for this tutorial just because I will be using worsted weight yarn, um, but the pattern does call for an E. So let's dive right in. Let's begin the Mod Triangles pillow by doing strip one first triangle, row one. So to begin row one, we're going to chain 11. So I'm going to use this bigger hook and worsted weight, remember, for this tutorial, but you can use what the pattern specifies. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then it says we need to single crochet into the second chain from hook. So not counting the loop on our stitch, one, two. So going into this stitch right here, I'm gonna insert my hook, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that is my first single crochet of the row. And then I'm going to single crochet into each chain across. And we will end this row with 10 single crochets. So here's my last stitch and I will check my work, make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have done row one correctly because we have 10 stitches in this row. Now for row two, so first you turn your work. For row two, you're going to chain one and then single crochet decrease. So to do a single crochet decrease, in the first two stitches, you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch and drop a loop, and then insert your hook into the second stitch, drop a loop. You have three loops on your hook, and then you yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook, and that is one single crochet decrease. And then we do single crochets in the rest of the row, except for the last two stitches. When we get to the last two stitches, we're gonna stop and do another single crochet decrease. Okay, so here are my last two stitches of the row. So again, I'm gonna insert my hook, drop a loop, and then insert my hook into the last stitch, draw the loop, and I have three loops on my hook. I yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook. And you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches in this row. So then you turn and then you're ready to do row three. 
So once we get to row nine, the end of row nine, I will meet back up with you and we will do rows nine and 10 together. Here I am at the beginning of row nine. To do row nine, it says I need to repeat row three. So I need to chain one, and then I need to single crochet in each stitch across. And there's only two stitches in this row. So I single crochet two, turn, chain one, and then row 10 says I need to do a single crochet decrease in remaining two stitches, and then fasten off. So there's my single crochet decrease. I'm going to fasten off. And then let's talk about how to do a single crochet join. So to do a single crochet join, you begin by doing a slip knot, inserting your hook through the slip knot. And then it says to do, when we're doing the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, and twelfth triangles for row one, it says working in row ends of previous triangle with right side facing. So right now we're looking at the back side because you can see my tail is right here. So I actually would suggest not weaving in your beginning tail because that's going to help you know what is right side and what's wrong side. So I need to flip this. This is my right side now. So with right side facing and having my um, slip knot on my hook, it says that we need to single crochet join in last row of previous triangle. So this is my last row right here. And so I need to insert my hook and then I yarn over and pull up a loop. I have two loops on my hook and then I yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook. And if I cinch up that last stitch there, it looks a bit better. So there is my first single crochet for row one. And then it says we need to do single crochets in each row. So down the side of the triangle here, we'll do a single, cro single crochet in each row. So we're gonna have 10 single crochets total down this row. So two, three, four, and 10. So you can see I've got my 10 stitches here. And then for row two, it says it is a repeat of rows two through 10 of first triangle. So again, you're just gonna do a single crochet decrease and then single crochet all the way to the last two and then do a single crochet decrease again. So I'm gonna go to that point and we'll meet back up. Okay, you can see that I finished row 10 of triangle two. And if you notice, I am looking at the wrong side right now because this is my first triangle and my tail is over on the right and it should be on the left because I'm right-handed if that makes sense. So I need to flip my work and in fact so that I don't get confused with what's right side and wrong side I'm just going to take a stitch marker and place it on the right side. That way I can keep track of it easier and not confuse myself. Um, so I, I have my right side right here and now I'm ready to do triangle three. Triangle three, you're gonna be doing a single crochet join again. So I have my slip knot ready to go. And then it says, working in row ends of previous triangle, single crochet join in first stitch of first row. So right here, I'm gonna join because this is my first stitch of the first row of the previous triangle. So, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and that's my first stitch. And then my second stitch in the second row, end of row, and then third, fourth, fifth, and finally my 10th. 
in the very top. Okay, so you can see I have my 10 stitches to beginning to start, make my third triangle. So I turn my work, chain one, and then it says that we need to do repeat rows two through 10 of first triangle. So again, we just do a single crochet decrease and then single crochet down to the last two stitches and then do a single, de single crochet decrease again. So I'm gonna build up this third triangle. And in fact, I'm going to just go ahead and make this entire strip um, and then meet back up with you. I am going to be making a slightly smaller version of this strip. Um, I'm just gonna make seven triangles just so I can demonstrate it easier on camera. Um, but let's meet back up on when I when we do that. Okay, so here you can see I've done my first strip. I said I was gonna do seven triangles, but five fit better on the camera. So that's why I only did five triangles. So you can see in the pattern, it has this diagram and you can see the first triangle is facing um, with the point down. And so you can see that that's what it says in the diagram here. And so we made the first strip it ends with a triangle, oh, sorry, my, uh, it hit the camera. Um, the, it ends with a point down, so that's why I have this point down, and then we will work on these corners later. Um, but so now we are going to be doing this triangle right here, and then um, starting our second strip. So let me get that pattern. Let me get the words back up, there we go. All right, so I have my right side facing me because I have my stitch marker here. And then it says, working in row ends of previous triangle with right side facing single crochet join in last row. So, um, oh sorry, that was the second triangle I was reading. So working in row ends of opposite side of first triangle of previous row with right side facing single crochet join in first stitch of first row. So right here, we're gonna join right here and then we're going to do our 10. So let's do that. Single crochet join, one, two, three, nine, and 10. So you can see my stitches here. So I'm gonna work this triangle up and then we will do um, the second triangle together. So I finished the first triangle in strip two. So now I'm ready to work my second triangle for strip two. So it says working in row ends of previous triangle with right side facing single crochet join in last row. So I'm going to single crochet join oops, into this top point. I'm gonna do my single crochet join and then just single crochet in the row ends like we've been doing. Three four, eight, nine, and 10. And then it says we need to slip stitch and center stitch of corresponding triangle of previous row. So the previous row center, it's right here, the point of this stitch. So we're going to slip stitch into here. And that completes row one of triangle two. So we now need to, um, for row two, repeat two through 10 of strip one first triangle. So that's what you do for rows two through 10, you just repeat. Um, so when you turn, that first stitch right here is the slip stitch. So your decrease is gonna go right here. And if you're confused and you're not sure where that is, you can count 10 single crochet stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's where I'm gonna do my, um, insert my hook first to do my decrease. 
like that. So then I just do my decrease and then do my single crochets until I reach the last two and then do another decrease. So I'm gonna finish this out um, and make this triangle and then we will talk about how to do the filler piece for this one. So here's my small sample size. You can see this is my first triangle that I made. And so now we're going to work on making the, the filler, first half filler piece for this section right here. And you can see in the chart, it is this brown section right here, this first half filler. So that is what we will make together we'll do a demo of. So working in gaps form between triangles, so right here, along outer edge of the two triangles, working in row ends with right side facing, single crochet join in first row of triangle at bottom of two strips. So there's a first stitch triangle right here and there's one right here. You're gonna join in the bottom, so this one right here. So I'm gonna do a single crochet join. And then it says single crochet in each row across. So one, two, three, four, nine, and 10. So we have our 10 stitches and then it says to turn and chain one and then single crochet decrease in first two stitches. So we'll do a decrease and then single crochet in each stitch to last two. So two, three, four, five, six. That helps me know it's an even number and so that there's two left. So here's my last two single crochet to work and I will do a decrease. Chain one and turn and you can see it says rows two through four. I need to do that. So I need to do a single crochet decrease again and then one. Oops two, three, four, and then a single crochet decrease in these two. Chain one and turn. And then last single crochet decrease row for the rows two through four. So one, two, single crochet decrease. And that completes row four. So row five, it says to chain one, which I just did, chain one and then single crochet decrease in first two stitches. And then single crochet decrease in the last two stitches. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn, I already chained one, and then single crochet decrease in remaining two stitches. So here are my two remaining stitches and I'm gonna do a single crochet decrease and then fasten off and we'll take a look at it together. Here we go. So you can see our first half filler is half of a square and then I'm gonna make the corner. It's the same, if you go down to the corner section, it says to um, do the first half filler triangle. So I'm gonna do that in my brown color. Okay, you can see my small swatch here. I've got one corner piece right here, my other corner piece here, and then I have a half filler here and there should be a half filler here as well. But I wanted to go through the pattern real quick because the edging section can be kind of confusing if you don't realize what you're working, looking at. So looking at the text here, when they say corner right there and there, they are referencing the actual pieces 
that are corners. So you can see there are two pieces in the diagram that are labeled as corners. These two pieces up here are not labeled as corners. So when you see corner, it's, la it's the labeled piece that they are referencing. The actual corners of the square are where it says three single crochet. You will be doing three single crochet in the same stitch, which is gonna make the curve um, or the corner, the actual corner of the piece. So you see one, two, three, and then we get back to the beginning for the fourth. So those are the actual corner pieces, corner pieces, not just the labeled corner piece, if that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing, but let's go through it together so that we can successfully make it. So on the edging section, the one that's after the corner section, since there are two edging sections, the first edging section, it says working in row ends along bottom of strip one, single crochet join black and stitch of last row on corner. So this is my corner piece. This is my last row. So I'm going to single crochet join in this. It's kind of a big one, there we go. And then it says two single crochet into the same stitch. One, two. So that's like our first corner piece. It's making the curve of the corner. So when we get to the end of this edging section, we will be able to join right here. So two single crochet into the same stitch and then single crochet in each row. So I'm going to do the end of these rows. I'm just gonna single crochet along. And then it says single crochet in last stitch of row one on next triangle. So this is what they're referencing. So one single crochet into that stitch. And then it says that we need to single crochet in each row of next triangle. So just placing one single crochet along the edge of each row. Working my way across here. Okay, nearly done with this triangle. And now we've reached the point where we're gonna place one into this tip here. And then again, one single crochet into each row edge. And this pattern, this repeat that we're doing is very similar to the top. So once you understand how to do the bottom, it's very similar to the top. Okay, so now we have again, we have our one that we need to place. And then it says we've gotten to the corner section. Um, so it says single crochet and next five rows of the corner. So this is our corner piece that we made. So we're gonna do five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And so there's one row left because there's six rows in this corner piece. And so it says in the last row, place three single crochets. So this is our actual corner. One, two, three. And it turned for us. You can see now we're turned ready to do the side here. 
So on along this side, it says single crochet and next row on each of the next two triangles. So first we will work this corner piece. Oops. Because we need to do our five rows. One, two, three, oops, four, five. Okay, so when it is talking about doing single crochet in next row on each of the next two triangles, it's talking about these two triangles. So one, and then two, that's where you're placing those stitches. That's what it's referencing. So one, oops, one, two, this is my brown that I'm doing, two. And then it says we need to do um, single crochet in each row of the next two half filler triangles. So I only did one half filler, but if you can imagine now, if you imagine with me, let me make sure I'm putting this on correctly. So it needs to go this way. Pretend like this is connected. This is another half filler. So you're gonna have two half fillers next to each other and you're gonna be working that like this. And then you just continue with that repeat. So to work the half fillers, it says single crochet in each row of the next two half fillers. So you just work into the ends of the rows here like this. And since my sample is so small, this is gonna act like my corner piece. So once you do get to the corner, it says you need to place three single crochet into the last row. So pretending this is my corner, one, two, three, and that turns me to then be able to start working along the top there. And so again, it's just a repeat. Um, so you should be able to successfully go along the top and then the bottom, if there was a filler piece right there along the bottom, or sorry, along the side here, and then single crochet in each row of the corner, the corner piece, join with slip stitch to the beginning chain. So that's how you complete the edging for this section. And then let's talk about how to do the assembly. The trick, the only tricky part I think with the assembly is remembering to put right sides together. So I still have my right side slip marker, um, stitch marker, sorry, stitch marker on here. So you're gonna want to have your right side um, sorry, so I'm saying this backwards, holding each piece with wrong sides together. So you're going to want to have your right sides out and then you're going to take the back panel and the front panel and you're going to slip stitch all the way around and you're gonna leave one edge open so that you can insert your pillow insert. Um, and then get a clean edge that way. So anyway, that is how you make this, um, the Mod Triangles Pillow, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed making the Mod Triangles Pillow with me. If you do give the Mod Triangles Pillow a try, I would love to see your progress or finished photos. You can share that on Annie's Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram pages, but be sure to use the hashtag Annie's so we can see and share your work. And be sure to check out Annie's Crafts on YouTube. My name is Rachel Alford, and I'm so glad that you joined me on this tutorial today, and I hope you'll join me soon on another one of my tutorials from Annie's.